everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk, and today we are leaving the Tim Burton Batman movies and jumping into the Joel Schumacher ones, so let's talk. Courage now. Truth always. Batman forever. So on June 16th, 1995, Batman Forever was released, and this is the first one that is directed by Joel Schumacher, but somehow takes place in the same universe as the Tim Burton ones, Batman and Batman Returns. So Matt, what did you think of Batman Forever? Well, I just want to touch on the same universe thing, because, I mean, I guess technically it does, but in my mind it doesn't. You know, we have Alfred is the same actor, what is, what's his name, Michael? Michael Goh. Michael Goh. And He's uh, the same, same actor. actor, and Jim Gordon also is the same, is a carryover. Right, but other than that, I mean, I still kind of separate them in my mind because they are very different movies. That's what always kind of bothers me right off the jump is that we go from the dark, gritty, practical effect worlds of uh, Tim Burton, and we jump into a neon nightmare of Joel Schumacher here, and well, it's a very uptone movie. It's not dark anymore because that was a studio request that they wanted Batman to be more kid friendly. They wanted to sell it to kids. They wanted to sell toys, and the opening line to this movie is, "I'll get drive through." For what? It was a McDonald's. It was for a McDonald's ad, so they had to throw right. that right in there. So <laughs> I don't know if it's the just the nostalgia talking because I'm 32 I was born in 1989 so this was aimed directly at me and I think this is probably my most watched Batman movie ever I loved Batman forever as a kid I still do but if I was to see it for the first time today eh, then I would have some questions but just looking back at it through the rose-colored glasses of nostalgia I think it's a fantastic movie. I love it. I'll still watch it to this day. Uh, Batman and Robin, that's a different story. But, <laughs> we'll get uh, to that one. We'll get to that. But I, I love Batman forever. I really do. I like you, I like Val Kilmer. I thought he did pretty good. Um, I wish he would have done Batman and Robin also instead of George Clooney. So I just want to start off by saying that everything this man just said is a lie. Uh... No, it's not. <laughs> No, okay, not everything. I do also it's really... An opinion. I do love Batman Forever. I do enjoy watching this movie. And this is my first Batman movie. Like, this is my introduction to Batman was through Batman Forever. So it's always going to be special to me, but it doesn't really hold up. I rewatched this for this video, and there's just some really big leaps in believability, and I know it's, I'm, I'm not, it's not supposed to take it that seriously, but for example... <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going with this. But the day that Harvey Two-Face gets burnt in court, <laughs> right before he does, Batman jumps over the ledge to go and try and stop the guy. That means that Batman was sitting in court in his bat suit, just there watching the case unfold. Might have been part of the jury. I, I Who's to say? Who's to say? But, you yeah, know, he got dressed up in his bat suit, <laughs> and no one questioned him sitting there that whole time. So I, like, it's just unbelievable to me. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's funny. Um, but I mean, other than that, is there any other plot holes that really bother you? I mean, like, listen, Tommy Lee Jones is playing so over the top, and it's funny because he hated Jim Carrey. The story goes that when they met, Tommy Lee Jones went in and hugged Jim Carrey and said, I will not tolerate your buffoonery. <laughs> and this man in this movie was doing his best Joker impression and totally just missed the ball on Harvey Two-Face, in my opinion. Joker? Yeah, I felt like he was doing a Joker impression as Two-Face. Like, it's... Yeah, like Two-Face is supposed to be more calm and collected. I mean, I get that, you know, everyone has a different take on it, but for me, that was just... That's not what he was supposed to be. And I think if we would have got Billy D. Williams like we were supposed to, maybe then... It would have been played a little differently. You know what? You know what? You know what bothers me? And even even the Dark Knight did it, I think. How is Two Face perfectly symmetrical? If we literally just watched him get hit with Acid. liquid, yeah, it should just leave like a. Splat. It was perfect. Did he? Like, how did that? Happen? I, well, because then he can't get his suits perfectly lined down the middle, or his apartment perfectly lined down the middle as well. <laughs> or even the two girls he gets, Drew Barrymore, as one of them, yep, are yeah. perfectly different to imitate two faces. 
Yeah. So if you didn't get burned perfectly, then it's just not going to work, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, I guess that's what bothers me the most, is how perfect it... Because I had the action figure. I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. But it was the, the animated series action figure, and he, when he had the pink. Yeah. The pink face. Well, I think... Well, actually, it, he it, did have the pink face in Batman Forever, now I think of it. Yeah, pink and blue. Like, I did... The animated series actually has a... You know, not to go off topic, has a great... A two episode arc about Two Face that I wish would be uh, brought to the big screen maybe one day, but other than that, but this movie, you know, not to get off topic, uh, Nicole Kidman is has a real thing for Batman. Um, the guys in black leather. Yeah, I mean, it, well, black rubber. Does she say rubber or leather? Yeah, she has a thing for guys in black rubber. I believe is what she said. And then. Val Kilmer, Batman says, try Fireman, lest to take off. Yep, she plays this role. At least they all committed, except for one actor, and that's Val Kilmer. And I'm going to go on record right now, and I'm going to say that Val Kilmer, not George Clooney, is the worst Batman. And that is just because I feel like this is the most phoned-in performance I've ever seen from a Batman actor. At least George Clooney, I think, was trying. Come on, you didn't believe him when he stood up in the circus and said, I'm Batman? No, I didn't think that really? this man showed a single sign of emotion in this movie. And and if you've seen the Val documentary, he said that it, it, he, it was not fun for him to play Batman because of the suit. And he couldn't hear. And if that's true, then you know what? I can understand. That's not the first Batman that said that they couldn't hear. Exactly. But, I mean, there's a lot of Bruce Wayne in this movie. And I don't think he's a good Bruce Wayne either. <sighs> so, it's... I like Val Kilmer. I, I didn't think it was bad. I'm sorry. I would have rather Michael Keaton. I would always rather Michael Keaton. That's unfortunately, like, when they did drop Tim Burton as director and moved him to producer, so did Michael Keaton. He dropped out, too. Mm -hmm. You know? So, that's why we ended up with this, and then eventually George Clooney, so... You know, you could just see the franchise at its peak just falling. And Plummet. Yeah, you know, this is a, not as bad as what comes next, but it's still not good. To end this part of the video, Matt, what would you give Batman Forever out of 10? Like I said, I have very high nostalgia for this movie. I don't know if it's the rose-colored glasses, I don't know if it's just a childhood thing, but it is a movie geared towards kids, and that's... What it is. I mean, if you show a 15 year old, not even 15, you show an 8, 9, 10 year old kid, they're going to like this movie. I mean, I did. I still like it. So, you know, I don't know if it's the nostalgia talking, but I'm going to say this is still a 7.5, 8 for me. Okay, I mean, it's still fun for me to watch. Jim Carrey's performance is still great. He leaned into it so well. Yeah, you we know? didn't even talk about Jim Carrey. Yeah, like, Edward E. Nigma. <laughs> yeah. It, Great. How's my mole? Yeah. <laughs> no, he played his performance great. I mean, it's so over the top. I mean, I don't know if Paul Dano is going to live up to what Jim Carrey did. I know people think it's crazy and ridiculous, but I, I don't care. He did it great. You know, there's and I, I'll always enjoy this movie for my Jim Carrey love. But other than that, it's pretty ridiculous. So I'm going to go five out of ten. Sorry, and that hurts me to say is my first Batman movie. That's disappointing to me. And uh, before we end this video, we're going to jump into a quick 4K review of it. Alright, so back to the 4K portion of our reviews. So, again, we still have the Steelbook, same set. You got your Batman Forever. Now, green is one of my favorite colors, so this is one of my favorite Steelbooks in here. And I just, I love Batman Forever. I really <laughs> So you got your digital code in there, you got the inside, I like when they do the inside artwork, and then your 4K movie, that's it. Nothing special, no Blu-rays, but I, I really like this set, it, it is very nice. I like all the individual steelbooks for the individual movies in one big steel, book, uh, steel box, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah, it's but, definitely an incredible packaging. Some so of the that's best the packaging. Seen. Um, as far as the disc, you got your Atmos track, you got your 4K visuals, and this is, I guess, old enough where it still benefits from the film transfer because once you get into the early 2000s, that's when stuff is pretty ugly with all the CGI. Well, so, actually, the CGI is pretty poor in this movie. Yes. Uh, the one scene that stands out to me is in the beginning. Gotham, like with that big dam and the, yeah, the how they face. fly through it. It's such. Right. I also feel like the and then it's so noticeable when they're on sets too. It's so jarring. Like everything's like smoky around it. 
Yeah. And I, mean, I feel like the again, HDR in this like makes all these colors pop, but it also makes all these like sh the ways they shot this movie more noticeable. Especially too. when you get to that one scene where uh, Robin is joyriding out in the Batmobile listening to one of our favorite bands, The Offspring. Smash it up. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but when all those gang members, I guess, with all the neon paints and stuff, that looked very good in HDR. Um, no, it definitely popped. Yeah, it's a good looking movie. It, and honestly, it's as not somebody, the Dark Knight. Yeah, and honestly, I just watched it actually on the HBO Max stream and it was pretty bad, if I'm being completely honest. And it didn't look good, so I would recommend if you can getting a physical copy of either in Blu-ray or 4K Blu-ray, because the Blu-ray is still very good too. And overall, I think that's the best option that you should go with, is going, if you can. But if not, and you just want to watch the movie, that's what I did. I was too lazy to grab the disc and I actually just threw it on the TV before I went to bed the other night, so... You know, I could definitely say I recommend. What do you think of Batman Forever, Lily? Yeah, Lil, did you like it? What do you think of Batman Forever? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good disc. It's a good set. All the 4Ks are definitely worth having if you don't have the Blu-ray already. Uh, is it worth upgrading from the Blu-ray to the 4K? The visuals are a step above, and you got that Atmos track. So if you want the best experience possible, go for the 4K for sure. And as always, thanks for joining us here on another episode of Let's Talk. Keep an eye out for more Batman reviews coming in the next few weeks. And as always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends.